How to Hustle and Win, Part 1, by Supreme Understanding, the introduction. The basics before you begin. Anytime you see someone more successful than you are, they are doing something you aren't, Malcolm X. Winning the game. As the rapper's Jim Jones has said, you respect my mind or respect my grind. He was onto something. In this game, you either think smarter or work harder if you plan to survive. Otherwise, you might as well kill yourself now because this is a dirty game and it's made to wear you down until nothing's left. And if that isn't death, what's death? Now, let's be clear. The word survive means getting out because staying trapped ain't survival in any sense of the word. When I say survival, I'm talking about success. After all, there's nothing less than we deserve. There's no reason you should come up out of all that hell and not be strong as hell and smart as hell, at least enough to be successful as hell. But most of us don't stand a chance in hell of making it. That's why we live for the moment. Focus on the next time we'll ride high while still living down the lows from the last time things went wrong. While folks on the other side of the fence are eating the whole pie. It's like we're trapped in a hole hoping for a few crumbs fall over to our side. And boy, do we fight hard for our side. After all, it's all we have. We have had to go hard for anything we need in life. And the first thing any man needs is dignity and self-respect. That's why we'll kill over our pride, spill blood for our side, and we'll be the first to ride or die. Mm. A survival guide for the ghetto. Somewhere in this process, we forget that the first time someone told us ride or die, it was on a slave ship. And the first side was the west side of Africa before we tricked into taking sides and taking rides. Back when taking a dive meant jumping overboard to a cold death before we let them trap us in slavery. Nowadays, the traps are everywhere, and some of us don't even feel trapped. Some of us are even a part of the trap itself. But I can't blame you. We watched the world abandon us, or so we thought, thinking that the only way to get right was to get it by any means. In the process, we forgot ourselves and each other. Little did we know that the world hadn't forgotten us at all. In fact, the poor people of the world, the black, brown, red, and yellow people of the world, they were waiting us to rise up. They are still waiting us to rise up. That's why the world follows every trend set by the black man. If the black man of America should ever rise up and demand change, the world will follow. But it would take a great man to take that first step because most people are followers. If you're up to get ready, it's going to be a long journey. Is this book for you? If you're reading this and you're still not sure about whether or not you're the type of person who would benefit from this book, I'll give you a few hints on how to tell if this book is meant for you. Number one, you you always been intelligent but hated school because they um they only taught bullshit. Number two, you see the injustice and wrong uh, doings going all around you and it's driving you nuts. Number three, you want to change something in the world or in yourself but haven't figured out how. Number four, you know you're not just another nigga. Number five, you're trying to turn your life around, but without church or the military. Number six, you're not waiting on Jesus to come back and save you. Number seven, you wonder why people are such followers and hypocrites. Number eight, you know there's more to life than this. Number nine, you're always questioning things. Number 10, you're able to take responsibility for the things that are happening in your life without blaming it on someone else or the devil. Number 11. Number 12, you're not scared to challenge the things most people believe. Number 13, you want better for yourself, for your family, or your people. If you're responding yet to any of these questions, then do yourself a favor and read this book from cover to cover. If nothing in here sparks your mind, then either you know it already or your brain did. I tried to make this book a all you can eat for your brain. There is stuff in here that you'll think is stupid, stuff that's funny, and stuff that will make you want to cry or knock somebody the fuck out. At the end, my goal is to reverse the ways uh, we've been destroying. Now, this book is aimed at young black men lost in the ghettos of America, but that doesn't mean other people can't read or ain't use this. The lessons and information here can apply to any person of any color anywhere. After all, we're still all going through the same things, whether we know it or not. What is this book not about? Everybody has expectations about something they're going to read before they actually read it. In school, I assumed every book would be boring, so I didn't really read much. In the process, I missed out on some pretty interesting books. Then again, I never ran into any books that truly spoke to me. And also on the side, it says, a note to everyone else. Many of the people who pick up this book will not be young men, but parents, 
educators, loved ones, and other people who are truly concerned about the young men in their lives. If you know how deep the problems are, you won't be turned off or scared by what I'm saying to you in this book because you understand why I'm saying it. I want you to read this book so you can uh, know what's really going on. But more importantly, I want you to get this book in the hands of the brothers who need it the most. Our intellectuals and community leaders will benefit by reading this also. So maybe they'll stop coming up with stupid misinformed theories that show off how the, uh, little they know about what's really going on. As for white people, I'll say this much now. If you're white and you're reading this either one, you know this book isn't for you, but you want to find something to start some trouble about. Or two, you know this book isn't for you, but you're generally concerned about what people of color are going through and you want to help. If you're in the first group, put the book down and go do some yoga. If you're in the second group, then good for you. Just make sure you read the whole book, both parts, and don't be turned off by the way things are said. I could say the majority of the world's ethnic pro uh, populations have been discriminated by Western capitalist ventures. But it's much more effective for me to simply say white folks have fucked shit up for damn near all of us. Now, if you're black and you have a problem with that, with what I just said about white people, you really won't be able to handle what I'm going to tell you in this book. You may want to put this book down so that two can go to do some yoga and kiss your dog in the mouth. Now, we go on to the next page. What I was going, though, at least not in school, later on in life, I learned how to tell if a book would be worth reading. I'm going to continue saving you some trouble by telling you what not to expect out of this book. This book is not a storybook or a trashy novel. It's fiction. I mean, if fiction is your thing, there are some good theories in this book. So you should still like it. But the stories are all true stories from the lives of hustlers, gangsters, conmen, uh, celebrities, revolutionaries, and racists. On the other hand, if you want to read about steamy church romances and tough guys who are secretly gay, then that's not what this is about. This book is not a church um, promptly. Sure, it has a message, but it's also full of cuss words and criminal activities. If life were different, I'll write it different. This book is not poetically correct. There are a lot of controversial, uh, controversial topics and ideas in this book. You don't have to agree. I just want you to be able to think about the issues that your uh, school books left out. This book is not one of those take power at all cost books like the Art of War or the 48 Laws of Power. We've been chasing money and power and hurting ourselves and each other in the process far, for far too long. Change your mind and your body will follow. What do people of the color look like following the business model of uh, that enslaved and exploited us? We're either going to exploit each other or ourselves. On the other hand, if you develop yourself into a determined, respectable individual with the right mind, success is inevitable. Finally, this book is not a set of spiritual or philosophical ideas that don't work in real life. This book is real life and every part of it, including many parts you won't never knew about. This book isn't just about getting money, power, or on the other hand, I mean, on the, or the right hand, but about transforming yourself so that you can have all of that and more. Why this book was written. Now, let's go into why you picked this book up. Either you already uh, like reading and thought this would be another good book to check out, or this may be a book that gets you back into reading. I was inspired when I first heard Young Jeezy talking about the book he was writing, Thug Motivation, to accompany his album on the same name. Jeezy always say he's not a rapper, but a motivational speaker, and I feel him on that. He commented on how most black youth are reading about, I mean, reading because there aren't many books out there that interest them or address issues that are relevant to them. I felt him on that too, but I was waiting, um, but I waited for the book to drop, and I waited another album came out, but still no book. Then I remember that the wise don't wait for food to rain down to heaven. So instead of waiting for someone else to write a book like this, I wrote one. Who am I? I'm you, before and after. I've been through almost everything you could be going through. And I say that with some um, certainty because I've been through a lot. See about the author. I've come out the hell I was born into as well as the hell I put myself through. And I came out victorious, not a victim, since I changed my name to Supreme Understanding. I lied at 15. I put a lot of thought and energy into developing my supreme understanding of everything in, in, um encountered. My first experience with the culture of Islam taught me that Islam means I study life around me by studying, investigating, observing, building with, and in listening to others much wiser than me. I've attained the 12 jewels every human being lives in pursuit of. 